In the last few videos, we've been looking at knowledge bases and how to organize knowledge so that then we can perform inferences on it. But here we're going to get to the nitty gritty of how we can extract information from our data. We're going to look at a technique called named entity recognition. Indeed, what we have been talking about so far is, for example, knowledge bases that have facts about the world in them some kind of, um, you know, uh, information. For example, that Dartmouth is in Hanover and that Hanover is in New Hampshire. These systems have this knowledge formatted in some way, and then they have inference engines that can take these facts and convert them into new facts so that they can, for example, answer a question like, is Dartmouth in New Hampshire? According to the system, yes because you can derive it from the entities and the relationships that we have in this little knowledge base, which is formatted like a knowledge graph. However, in order for us to build a knowledge base, we need to get information from the data. We need information extraction. For example, the capability of identifying Dartmouth as an organization and Hanover as a geopolitical entity is the name of that tag. Also, New Hampshire is a geopolitical entity. So once we have extracted that, we can then have these as entities and we can find the relationship that links them. There's so much in the field of research of information extraction that we're only going to look at a few examples here. But some important techniques are a named entity recognition, which is recognizing proper nouns in a text, co-reference, which is trying to figure out if a work uh, is related to a pronoun, for example, it or she. So that you can see, for example, if I have United Airlines, blah, 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 it said, blah, 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 blah. You can know that this it also refers to this entity here. There's relation extraction, which is trying to figure out uh, what the elements ultimately are going to be of, of our knowledge base. For example, the Dartmouth is a part of Hanover and the Dartmouth is in Hanover. There's temporal extraction, which is trying to figure out when something is happening. For example, if you have a reservation for a flight, Gmail is extracting times from your mails and it knows that you might have a flight on a certain date and that's how it gives you the reminder. There's also a technique called template filling, which is similar to having a small uh, ontology that you've already made. For example, you know that there's uh, information about flights and that the components of that information, the attributes are the date of the flight, the price of the flight, the seat of the flight. So this tries to extract all of this information, for example, from your emails to then create an entity which is your flight reservation and do something with it, like present it to you or get you to your, you know, auto check-in. Let's focus here on named entity recognition. This is an example from the book where you can see the different entities in the paragraph. For example, an organization like United Airlines, a time like Friday, and a location like Dallas, Denver, and San Francisco. There are several types of entities that are recognized by most systems. For example, people, uh, which can be real people like Turing or characters, organizations, locations such as Sunshine Canyon, Denver, geopolitical entities, which is the one that we saw before with Hanover, New Hampshire, or Palo Alto, facilities, vehicles, and so forth. How do we get these? Incredibly, rule-based uh, approaches are fairly effective. And as with everything, we first need to build a data set so that then we can build a deep learning solution if we want to. So we're always going to need to start with some sort of feature-based system or rule-based system. And there are many features that we can use. For example, the identity of neighboring words. In English, if a word is preceded by the, like in the IPCC, this word is probably going to be a named entity. It's probably going to be a proper noun. If you have a word that is a noun, 
this is probably going to be a named entity as well. Uh, you can help. You can get help from the parsing. For example, pen, uh, the pen tree bank tags proper names as NNP proper names, and so these are almost one hundred percent sure to be actual proper names. There's features you can use, like being in all uppercase, like the acronym IPCC. Uh, it's very unlikely that a verb is going to be written like this in English. You can use something called the word shape, which sometimes is used is described with a series of X's, as you can see. So the first X means uppercase, and the second X means everything else is lowercase. So the shape of the word palo is starts with an uppercase, continues with a lowercase. Alto is starts with a lowercase, continues the uppercase, continues with a lowercase. This kind of shape is almost certainly going to be a proper name in English. Because, for example, if you study German, you know that this rule will fail. Because in German, all nouns need to be capitalized. So as um, Again, these rules are language specific, and this set can help us extract pro uh, named entities in English. And as you can see, there's many features that we could use, and systems do use these. For example, um, if you run the spacey package and ask to extract the named entities, it's going to give you things like this. Apple is looking at buying a UK startup for a billion, and it's gonna tell you that Apple is an organization and that that part of the string goes from character zero to five. In doing that, it's also doing something like a dependency parsing. And here you have, for example, the shape of the word apple, which is starts with an uppercase, continues with a lowercase. The word UK is uppercase dot, uppercase dot. And this shape in English is almost always going to be a named entity. Once you have uh, in enough of a training set, you can get something using a neural network or a classifier. And uh, usually systems use the IOB tagging system that we saw for chunking, where you tag things that are at the beginning of a named entity, an intermediate part of a named entity, or outside a named entity. So for example, here in American Airlines, a unit of AMR immediately matched the move. American would be the beginning of an organization named entity. And airlines would be the interme an intermediate word of an organization named entity. And by the transition from intermediate to outside, we know that this is where this named entity ends, and this is outside of any named entity. So how do we train these? This is up to your imagination. You can use any kind of classifier that you want. You can use a uh, support vector machine, for example. You can use a neural network, a fancier deep learning neural network. You're always going to need a set of inputs. For example, the part of speech, the chunk, the shape, and uh, the actual token. And this, uh, if you've set up a classifier, it will give you some sort of output. But again, you're going to need to extract some data first in order to train this kind of system. Most systems that you're going to run, commercial systems, are going to be using some sort of neural classifier. In summary, we have many techniques that, are, that we can use to extract information from text. And one of them is named entity recognition. It can extract nouns, and in particular proper nouns, from a sentence. And this will help us tell what are the entities that we have in a sentence, like American Airlines, Denver, Little Ness X, and so forth. In the next video, we will look at the extraction of relationships between words and uh, how to fill out templates, which can help us create our knowledge bases.